right so uh, five percent of all childhood fractures involve the humerus shaft and the good part is vast majority can be treated conservatively the reason for this is that upper limb is non-weight bearing and hence anatomical alignment is not necessary for functional restoration your shoulder motion elbow flexion extension and forearm rotations can effectively compensate for any mild to moderate humeral deformity and the last thing is that you have a very good remodeling potential of the humerus uh, deformity because 80 percent of growth occurs from the proximal physis so the limit of acceptability in humerus shaft fracture is pretty uh, wide so you can accept almost up to 20 to 30 degrees of varus about 20 degrees of apex anterior angulation 15 degrees of internal rotation and almost about one to two centimeter of shortening the only relative contraindications are if you have an open fracture or any associated neurovascular injury or you have a diaphyseal fracture which is well beyond the acceptable alignment. So hanging cast is a very good method of uh, treating almost middle distal third and any comminuted uh, humerus shaft fracture and it has a dual advantage. It gives some amount of immobilization. And also you have the gravity traction, which can work and give you a continuous traction. Now we love it like in adults in lower limb fractures, we put them on the traction table and the Steinman pin skeletal traction and give traction. So here the, there will be a continuous dynamic gravity traction. So what are the tricks to control the alignment in this? Because here you know that the fracture is not going to rigidly, we are not immobilizing one joint above. So it is just a minimal immobilization of the shaft as such. But the trick is, if you want to control the alignment, you can keep your loops in a tricky way. So if you want in sagittal alignment, if you, as you can see in the figure, if there is an anterior angulation, you can decrease the length of the sling. So that will correct your sagittal angulation. And if there is a posterior angulation, you can increase the length of the sling. So that will indirectly help you in correcting the sagittal alignment. We will see this in a video. And if you have a coronal malalignment, then the loops are placed with the sling in such a way that you can correct the coronal alignment. So if there is going to be a lateral angulation, then you put your loop dorsally on the wrist. And once you tighten that, that alignment can be corrected. And if you have a medial angulation, then the loop can be kept on the volar aspect of the wrist. And by tightening, you can correct the alignment, which is shown in this picture. So we will run through a short video. So the cast is exactly like an above elbow cast, preferably about one to two centimeters starting above the level of the fracture. And you can go till the wrist, but if it's a very small child and a very uh, uh, smaller kid, then the wrist is uh, included and you can go up to the metacarpophalangeal joint. So typically like you put the, uh, the stock in it, the uh, soft roll, and then you put your above elbow cast. It should not be very heavy weight because then you know it's going to be gravity traction. If the cast is very heavy, then the child will not tolerate. So preferably a lightweight cast, because here the main purpose is the gravity traction and not just a rigid immobilization. Now this is an important point. You, uh, here we've put big loops just for demonstration, but you secure the loops at the level of the wrist. They have to be secured well with the plaster so that they stay in place. So one loop is just at the radial border and the other two are at volar and at the dorsal level. So this loop will help you. Once you've applied the plaster, you see how is the alignment under C-arm. And as I mentioned in those figures, you can adjust the loop and tighten the loop accordingly just to correct your residual uh, sagittal and rotational malalignment. So once you have secured the loop, you put your sling, check your reduction under C-arm, and then accordingly manage either the length of the sling or the position of the loops. So this can definitely be used in the initial period. And then once the plaster is, uh, the fracture is little gummy, if the child is not tolerating, then you can shift to functional forearm cast. So this is the loop. The length can be adjusted to correct the sagittal plane. And similarly, you can put them volarly or dorsally. The disadvantage is that because you're going to immobilize elbow, wrist, uh, elbow and shoulder both, the, again, the stiffness will be there. And the main thing is that there may be poor compliance because the child has to be in dependent position for the gravity to act. So erect position most of the time of the day and even sleeping semi-erect or erect and reclining position. 
but it, it is a good method of treatment for uh, effect, uh, effectively managing humerus shaft as we can see in this patient we are treated with hanging cast but the outcome depends on good casting technique and you have to monitor and of course the compliance of the patient by properly following the instruction of standing erect thank you